Yeah, recording and um, in yet. Let's let's try the, um, the 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 link to put this on uh, YouTube. So if I if I just click on this. Oh, right. right, right. Oh, right. Is this what you'd like okay. to play as a as a sort of a? Yes, the same, same, but only short. Only oh, I short. see. Okay. I, I understand. Not okay. Tall. Okay, let's uh, let's sort of leave that then. Uh, yeah, I I understand. So I'll um, I sh I shall play that as soon as we're ready for you to start speaking. Is that is that correct? No. Oh, <laughs> tell me then. <laughs> no. Uh, later, later. When I, I, I just, I'll see you. Right. So it will be somewhere, somewhere. Um, I'll see you anyway. Fine. Okay. Uh, so I will uh, uh, now begin the you know, the, the, the opening. Uh, and as with all these these moots, um, normally start with the first few words of uh, Boluspal which is a call for silence so we can uh, dispense with some of the thoughts uppermost in our minds about paying bills and uh, what we've got to cook for dinner and so forth to calm ourselves down and find our quiet and receptive center so we can make uh, most use of the words we're about to, to hear to uh, and it's also our, our, our fertile center. Good, so pause here. Uh, I should then um, recite some, uh, uh, a verse, the famous Sig Reformal prayer, which is a, is a very good uh, prayer to ask for the blessings of the gods in, in an undertaking. And I shall light a candle and we can begin. Uh, sorry, Stad, just one point. Uh, if you're going to record it, I think it's important that people turn their loudspeakers off. Otherwise, you might get on the recording. It might be lots of people. So you're making noise. It's just, just occurred to me. Um, at the moment, it's quiet. Um, okay, just... Yeah. Uh, it occurred to me, you know, that if you're recording it and then somebody has suddenly the telephone goes or something, you might sort of spoil it. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, oh I just, I'll take that chance. Okay. Rios bigeg allar helga kindir, meri og minni, mögu hend allar. Heldag og heldag sinir er nott og nif, du har reyd om augumle til takke sinir og gevet sitt jondum sikker. Alle aanzicht, alle aanzinnen, heel snel hun vorm te volgen. Maar mijn wit geven ze ook bij mij om twee, maar lijkt niet zijn dan met een leven. Brande, brande, brand ons poen in air. Voen ik weet eens af, na maas af, maar niet weg, het maal die keuze en het is duidelijke afdoel. Flame is quickened by flame. A man from another man may become wiser, but from conceit may remain ignorant. Truth, like the sky, is above and beyond us all. Gods of our peoples and lands, may we spend this time together in friendship with you and with each other and use it to the common good, with profit and with pleasure. Hey, load in. Kriwe um, Inya, it's a, it's a great pleasure and uh, honour to have you as a guest today. Um, so I, I shall leave, leave. Uh, I give you the floor and um, uh, welcome to start screen sharing if that is what you you would like to do. Hello, everybody. Um, at first, I'd like to say um, 
to, to chant a prayer, uh, a prayer that what was recorded in uh, when we collected our folklore. And uh, with this prayer, I always uh, start every morning. So I'd like to sh share it with you now. <clears throat> Шванта жемяле, швента расяле, те гули не що я муме жемяле, дарано. Швента жемяле, швента расяле, те гули не що я муме жемяле, скалосо. Швента угняле, швента лепсняле. Te gul su shil, do mu su shiridale, go so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, these are words uh, saying to Mother Earth, to Gemina, goddess of Earth, and to, to fire, uh, fire goddess. So, um, um, so I'll start my talk. So I'll talk about Romova, as I, I, I asked. I, uh, I'll talk about Romova, indigenous Baltic religion. So Romova embodies the oldest religion in the Baltic region, which has no beginning, predates recorded history, and extends its spirit indefinitely in the Baltic culture. This religion has no human founder, no major scriptures, and it's based on folk beliefs, uh, myths, and folk songs which we call Dainos. A central feature of the Romova faith is the sacred fire. We believe uh, that fire is considered the only worshipful symbol, the great purifier and sustainer of the nature and the sun itself. Uh, the ancient bolts we are often referred as fire worshipers. In ancient times, tribes had official sanctuaries on high hills and on river banks where a fire was maintained, guarded by priests, and the niche house were the sacred hearths in which fire was never extinguished. We have the name for, uh, for goddess of fire, and we name a, a, it Gabia. Gabia, it's the goddess of fire, of the hearth, protector of the family. At the same time, she's a form of the eternal flame of the universe, with her powers uniting not only the living with each other, their family, tribe, and nation, but also with the spirits and deities. Fire is the most sacred thing in Baltic rituals. During holidays, she is ceremoniously ignited, awakened, fed, and lulled to sleep. The name of fire goddess Gabia is derived from the verb abgaupti, that means to cover up. This refers to the process of putting Gabia to bed by carefully banking the coals and ashes for the night and uttering prayers that entreat her to stay put and do not wander. The ever burning fire is washing. It is given food, drink, and it is prayed to. Fire is in the in the mediator between people and gods. And fire is 
did at all important calendar and family holidays. And um, now you can see on the screen uh, uh, the words of uh, this main chant, which we uh, sing when we are uh, burning the fire. Uh, uh, in in your we we um, uh, you're not sharing your screen if that's what you you wish to do. Uh, we I can't... am not not here. No, we can't see um, see your screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Share share screen. Share screen. Now is it okay? Excellent. Thank you. Oh, okay. I thought I already did. <laughs> so, okay. So now you can see from big beginning. So some some photos, some uh, of what I already said about the fire at the center of of ritual. And there is also some picture from uh, the start of of uh, 20th century, and which describes how, how in old times it was fire worship. And the, now, what I wanted to tell about, <clears throat> so uh, there you can see the words of uh, this uh, special chant chance to the fire goddess. And now it is time to uh, turn on this link, link with, uh, with this special song. Yes, you should be able to do that, do that well. I think that that will have to be a new a new share if you um I need to do a, a new share a new screen share Okay So I I need to stop sharing um, I think you should see a a sign saying a new share and that will go back to the the menu of your computer so you can select it uh New share. Yeah. New share and? Um, ah, you want me to do this? Yeah, I think you, 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 can, you, can, sh you can go to the uh, uh, video clip, yeah. If you can't, oh. then you Okay, can so for me, a little bit, okay, where is my, a little bit lost. Look, anyway, anyway. So I, I then in this case let's not waste the time. So uh, I just sing the song, but uh, very shortly, not all. Daga ugenala tuta tuta, daga gabia tuta tuta, bila kalinali tuta. Tuta gabi ya uginala tuta tuta uskur tajibek ya tuta tuta and so on. But the main principle of this chant is you can see the words, yes? You can see. Mm. So the main principle is that I am starting and uh, others are repeating. So it's uh, the most old style of, uh, of sacred chanting. And uh, you can 
find it in, uh, in both in India and in other countries, just as one starts and other repeat. The so it, in, in English, uh, it's, it, I think it's called a, a round because one person starts and the next person, so it can kind of go a, around the whole whole uh, whole group in, in a sort of circle. Uh, no, it's, it's not. So oh. uh, in this case, one person starts and others are repeating all, all, uh, all the group, all, all chorus. It's called and response. Chorus, yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, uh, what else um, I should say? So I just uh, uh, put here some photos from our celebrations with uh, lit and fire. So uh, this one is from our. Uh, uh, every um, every uh, August we have some youth youth music festival, and the thousands of people are gathering here. And uh, this is uh, uh, and always this festival is opened with our rituals. And this photo actually is one of the last uh, festivals. So this oak tree and the fire, uh, fire in the middle, uh, and this is from the same same festival. We are doing some ritual dance here. Mm. So again, some fire. Um, so uh, also the photo from from this festival, and this photo is very special because. It's photo from Romova village. We have uh, Romova village in um, uh, southeast of Lithuania. It's it's some um, eighty kilometers from Vilnius, from uh, the capital city. Mm -hmm. And here we have little house and uh, little shrine, little temple. And this mm -hmm. uh, inside the temple, you can see me uh, burning the uh, fire. Mm -hmm. And this photo also is interesting because, you know, in the center, it is a um, prepared fire altar prepared for, for ceremony. And this is ceremony of my inauguration, if you I write say, say in English, yes, mm -hmm. uh, as as Krive, as highest priest. Yes. yes. And it's on the main hill of Vilnius, uh, on Gedimino Castle Hill, this one. So the ceremony was made. Mm. Uh, now a few words about uh, uh, eternal fire, keepers of etern eternal fire. And this photo is on the one of the uh, castle hills in the lowlands in uh, west of Lithuania. And um, I get what I can say that in our days, we also have tradition of keeping the eternal fire and it is preserved in Jamaitia, uh, uh, lowlands of Lithuania. Starting uh, from 1994, it was lit and worshiped in the house of Romova priest Gadvelas and after his death, it is guarded by devotees near the Kshatriya Hill. Here you, you can see the top of Kshatriya Hill and one of the rituals. Um, and, um, and here is the small, small shrine. Inside it, the sacred fire is kept, uh, is kept and the people are changing and they are looking after it and how it looks inside. So you can see the vessel and the fire is inside, inside, inside the here. So now, uh, two years when they uh, constantly people are uh, gathering here and keeping the sacred fire. So now, uh, short history of Romova. I know that uh, some of you know it very well, the circumstances of our uh, religion uh, and faith and so on. But uh, some of you, maybe it's something new. So 
So just uh, short history. So sources from the 14th century state that in the center of Baltic lands, today Kaliningrad region, the Romova century, which was revered by all Baltic nations. Lithuania uh, registered Christian uh, aggression, uh, but was constrained to accept Christianity in 13. 87 politically for surviving. And it was only in uh, 1387 that the sacred fire was distinguished in Eastern and in 1413 in Western Lithuania. Mm. Um, at first, these changes affected principally uh, the nobility. But the conservative Lithuanian population maintained the traditions of their ancestors and secretly worshipped their gods and goddesses for several centuries more. So um, uh, in the scripts, it's uh, Christian scripts, it's written that in the 17th and 18th centuries, Jesuit missionaries pointed out in their reports the lamentable state of affairs. They said that peasants in Lithuania did not attend churches, did not accept the Holy Communion, and the superstitious and barbaric rituals we are still alive. So um, uh, when you start uh, studying some news about Lithuania, and about the history. So the first one usually is a statement that Lithuania is the last country in Europe to be Christianized. It, and the, it's, it is uh, completely true. So um, attempts to restore Baltic Romova's religion started in 19th century and contemporary Romo movement started the activities in 1967, when the sacred fire in, in Kernave, uh, in the first capital of Lithuania, was uh, lit at that time during the summer solstice. And um, uh, this movement was suppressed by Soviets in 1971 and was uh, persecuted so it, uh, we worked underground, so, but we, uh, we celebrated our festivals and so on. We had such um, informal movement. And um, we were registered as religion community in 1992 when Lithuania became independent. So uh, uh, they are, uh, with some photos, uh, but um, I should say that the people uh, uh, of the countryside still retained the ancient traditions. And in the middle of 19th, when folklore began to be systematically collected in Lithuania, and even in the 20s, when after World War II, in, in 50s and 60s, students of Vilnius University began to write down folk songs and tales. Still, a rich spiritual tradition thrived in, in the villages. And this tradition inspired uh, young people, including myself, to restore and continue our ancient tradition. And uh, publicly perform such ceremonies as honoring the sacred, uh, sacred fire and so on. So here you will see some rituals from our uh, summer solstice celebration. So uh, is, uh, it is uh, usually celebrating in Kernave, it's, it's uh, uh, ancient Lithuanian capital. Here you can see Castle Hills, and here some some gates and uh, yes, some uh, gate ritual we are doing. So we are waiting for for the sun. 
and uh, uh, at the same place, but uh, different time, also a secret fire uh, lit. Um, and as I said, <clears throat> that uh, 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 Romova people we are uh, persecuted during Soviet times, and um, and uh, my uh, first crisis of Romova, uh, Jonas Trinkunas, my late uh, husband, uh, in 2013 was awarded by Lithuanian's president for maintaining the traditional culture and uh, for his um, struggle uh, against the Soviet regime. So he has a photo from, uh, from this award and he has a photo with the president, uh, Lithuania president, Dela Gribovskaya, uh, who is in the center. And uh, here uh, is uh, my husband, Jonas Trinkunas, some family members, and some our Romuba priests here. Mm. So, so um, now, um, now I'll uh, tell <clears throat> some words about uh, about uh, Romova, about our uh, uh, spiritual tradition. And uh, uh, Romova continues the spiritual tradition of ancestors. Um, as I uh, earlier said, the source of Baltic religion is living and interrupted unwritten tradition of spiritual practice. And we have manifestations in old songs, tales, legends, customs, and as other heritage of our ancestors. Um, we celebrate calendar, family, personal holidays. Um, and um, uh, Lithuanian, ancient Lithuanian folklore is one of the source of our Baltic religion. Um, we have uh, we have special songs, special ritual songs, very ancient. We call them supertinas. They are some uh, multi-part songs. And um, if, if, if uh, you never had them, you need to, to listen. Because um, for, for it, I am not prepared now. But anyway, they are very, very ancient. And uh, they are specific only in Lithuanian. And they are included in national inventory of intangible cultural heritage uh, values. So um, uh, these uh, dainas, chants, uh, they allow us to reconstruct a metaphys in metaphysics in which the highest aim of a human life is to live in harmony with the Bill of the gods with the ryth rhythms of nature and with the other members of society. The semantic analysis of the texts of Dainas or chants has shown the existing widely expressed parallelism between the life of human beings and the nature. Both nature objects and human personalities are perceived of the equal importance. And uh, one of the examples, um, it is a wedding song. Uh, this you can see the words of uh, the song which we are sing during our, uh, our wedding ceremonies. Here you can see the very wedding ceremony in our Romova village. Here is the fire and the altar in the center, and there is the circle of stones around. And the, the text is uh, uh, the falcon and the cuckoo are together. They had flied into the garden. They had squatted down on the branch. They had drank the dew from the soul list. They had picked the berries from the soul bush. The gossoon, 
uh, don't know if I pronounce right, the Gosun and the maiden we are together. They had ridden into the manor. They sat down on the bench. They had drink the meat from the soul scoop. And they, they had tasted the honey from the soul spoon. So here is the example of such parallelism of uh, human and nature life. And if you, if you want, I just sing a little bit. Mm. Kurasa kuala listana gyagyotala Kurasa kuala listana gyagyotala Anisus krida vienan sodalen Anisus krida vienan sodalen Okay, it's, <laughs> I think it's love because my voice is not suitable now for, for it. So, <clears throat> um, what else? Um, now, um, regarding this um, uh, close connections to the nape, and uh, and to the earth, I uh, need to represent present the earth bodies uh, earth bodies Gemina uh, Gemina uh, and here is the book of uh, Niola Lorinkiene. She is um, a, a honorary priestess of Romova. I don't know if I am, um, uh, you understand what does it mean? Honorary priestess of Romova. Yes? I think so, yes. Um... yes. So, so um, there are, there are uh, some, um, some uh, famous and very important uh, um, scientists who, who are studying uh, our tradition, our gods and so on. Mm -hmm. And they are publishing uh, books, and uh, we uh, we give uh, him uh, them such a name. So she is one of our honorary priests. We call it the, uh, call uh, in Lithuania it's Garbes Vaidila. So and <clears throat> this is a monography of her about about Gemina as goddess. And uh, why I am putting his, this book here? Because, because uh, um, uh, the, the material in this book, uh, it is uh, historical sources, but also, um, also I can say nowadays folklore. And um, uh, uh, she describes a honoring ritual for Earth Goddess Gemina, which was recorded in 2011. Here you can see photo of her. She is author of a book. She is uh, second from the left side. Yeah. And uh, one more uh, woman who recorded this and uh, these others are uh, village people. And um, and the, uh, uh, the ritual uh, which is described in the book, I can read it. Upon completion or completion of the cutting of the rye, offerings would be made to Gemina, uh, the earth goddess. In the field, a bed of uncut rye was left. The area was weeded out. It was braided into a plate, wrapped, and a stone was placed on top. This was to ask the earth to be fertile. It was called the Yevaras or Yovaras Bridge. Underneath it, people, underneath it, people usually placed bread, salt, 
so that Gemina would be reborn next year. And uh, that the strength of her uh, yield would be re uh, revitalized. So it's recorded in 2011 in Trakai near, near Vilnius. So um, here is a photo of, um, of me uh, preparing for ritual for goddess Gemina uh, in Romova village. Uh, so, so now uh, I want um, Yes, I wanted to present some some our um, our um, production, our our CDs of of Rom Varichel Group Kulgrinda. Uh, I am a leader of this group, and there, there is the list of our of our CDs, and the, we have. Uh, published a lot, recorded a lot. And uh, here uh, you can uh, notice that uh, mainly they are devoted to Lithuanian gods. So we have rites of fire, we have hymns for Tarkunas, we have Sotvaras, the god of creator. We have hymns to the sun, we have hymns to Gemina, goddess of Res, hymns to Lima, goddess of the Fate, hymns to Ostea, goddess of Bees. This is the last, but, but he have, we have uh, more plans. So there are covers of some of our CDs. It's, uh, yes, Ms. Gemina. But may I ask it, are some of these uh, new, newly written hymns, or are they all old? Uh, oh, um, you, they, they uh, what can I say? Mostly they are old. All the tunes are completely authentic. Mm. All the tunes. Uh, here, maybe I need to, to say that Lithuania has almost a million folk songs recorded. So um, we have very, very rich heritage. And so anyway, we don't need to create. Mm. And the main thing is just to ad adjust some words uh, sometimes we're taking words from some sources uh, recorded, you know, as uh, uh, as prayers, and we we take a tune and we combine. But mainly, mainly in these old CDs, these are authentic words and uh, authentic uh, music, authentic tunes. That, that, that's an, an astonishing thing you said about the number of, uh, of uh, folk tunes. I, I knew it was a very rich tradition, but um, that, that is, that is uh, yeah, uh, very good to hear, very good to hear. Yeah. Oh, yes, there is, uh, again, some, some ritual in the sacred place. <clears throat> um, what else I can say? Mm. That uh, here you can see photo from uh, uh, from the uh, uh, the festival of songs. In Lithuania, we have very long tradition of songs festivals. It it started before uh, World War II in first independent Lithuania, and it was continued even uh, during Soviet times, and of course. The reverse was in in um, when we get independence, and that unites all Lithuanians uh, staying abroad. And they came. Um, 
it's, I think, every three or every four years, we have a, a huge festival of songs. Uh, a thousand of, thousands of participants uh, participate in it. And for us is, is a big honor that if this actually is the main cultural event in Lithuania. You can imagine, it's very big. And it, it, uh, it um, uh, lasts for, for a week. And uh, uh, for us, it is honor that we are invited in this festival to make opening ceremonies. We are invited as Romuva and as a singing group Kulgrinda. And uh, here you can see several years ago in one of the festivals here, uh, my late uh, uh, husband is, is uh, on the steps, high steps, and we are singing the song to, to Perkunas to Thunder God. So, and this tradition lasts and here you can see, this is, uh, this one, uh, uh, song festival is the last one two years ago. And here you can see the, uh, the main square of, uh, of Vilnius, of capital city. And this is cathedral square. You know, you see cathedral. And here you see our fire altar. And we were invited to, to um, uh, start the uh, start uh, the folklore day starts with the fire ritual and we are lighting fire here and we are making uh, offerings and sing uh, our chants uh, anyway this is my daughter in the center so and the other people also are making offerings to, to the fire so, um, <clears throat> so I am saying this, uh, that you, uh, just for you to know the, the context about, uh, about uh, our community and what we are doing. Now, um, uh, I'll present some <clears throat> tenets of Romula. Um, So if you have still have a patience. Mm. Okay? Yes. Yes, of course. Yes. So um, <clears throat> the main tenets of Rome, the world is alive. Life is understood in a much wider perspective than just biological life. Yeah. Uh, we say that sun is alive, uh, uh, trees are alive rocks, water, uh, the, the earth is alive. And um, that is why our world outlook must be respectful. Um, second one, Dharna, the rule of harmony. The world is harmonious, but this harmony isn't regular. It sometimes weakens and disappears. Therefore, it is important to hold on to it, to create and expand it. A person's duty is to reach for harmony, to protect it. Harmony, uh, we call it the Dharna, is the basis of our ancient culture and religion. Man lives and the world exists due to harmonious interactions uh, rudimentary to life and through man's own correct and moral behavior. We honor gods and goddesses. Um, uh, we, are, we have uh, God, God, uh, which we are named Ramjus. We have Sender God Perkunas. We have uh, Gemina Earth Goddess. We have Lima <clears throat> Goddess of Faith. We are, we have. Yeah, who is this? Who is the picture? This is who picture is of, of Sander God, Perkunas. 
Of whom? Thunder God. Thunder God. Perkunas. 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 Thunder God. Yes. yes. So, <clears throat> so the world is eternal. It is conscious, uh, continuously created by the eternal godly powers. According to Lithuanian mythology, the world is created and recreated by at least two gods, light and darkness, uh, um, creation and destruction, devas and wellness, god and devil. Uh, their relationship create the harmony and the vitality. Romova proclaims, proclaims no eternal hell, no damnation, no eternal salvation, only continued continuity of life in the presence of divinity. Mm, nature is sacred and sacredness is the most perfect characteristic of life, it unites everything. Our people grow and cultivate their land. The Lithuanians consider their home sacred. Without its land, a nation cannot survive and remain as itself. Therefore, we must love and respect our earth and protect it. For Lithuanians, holy are the rivers, springs, trees, stones, hills, groves, and, and others. The mysterious creative strength is personified so that through visible feeling and understanding, it shapes man to draw him near the divinity. Now there are um, few books of another of our um, uh, honorary priest, Vikintas Vaitkavichus, and uh, I am showing these books. They are several books. And these are uh, ancient um, or old, semi, um, old, um, it as uh, sacred places of Lithuania. And it's uh, very impressive when you read these books. These are very uh, 500 or more pages, uh, everybody, uh, uh, um, everyone. So um, only in uh, its uh, description of uh, sacred places in, uh, in all Lithuania. For instance, only in West Lithuania, in, uh, in this book, in West Lithuania, uh, it is recorded uh, uh, almost 1,000 of sacred places. And the recordings are contemporary. That means that, uh, that it's from ethnographic material. He himself uh, uh, walked and collected the material and uh, also looked in uh, archives. And uh, it's very impressive that the, that the uh, memory, memory of this um, old tradition and old places as is still alive. So uh, next planet um, is the honoring of ancestors. We are thankful to our ancestors for our existence, our language, our homeland. This is why we constantly have to remember them and express our respect. The Baltic face unites unites all those who believe the living and deceased. Death is a part of nature. When body dies, the soul can continue on by moving into another form. After death, death the spirit joins the rest of our deceased family. And during rituals, the dead and living meet. 
We remember dead family members and relatives on special days. And uh, now it is, uh, nowadays is the time of commemoration, uh, commemoration of deaths. And um, uh, I don't know if some of you have been in Lithuania at that time at the start of uh, November. Uh, and when you go by car in, in Lithuania, the, just pass pass the um, small towns and so uh, and and villages, and you can see the uh, the ocean of uh, of candles because every. Every person is commemorated, and the the fire is lit on on every every. Um, okay, forget the name. When persons are buried. Oh, uh, grave. Uh, on grave, yes, on yeah. on graves. So. Yeah. So um, this photo is. Uh, we also are, are doing to commemorate, um, commemorate our, our old ancestors on our old graves, which we have in Lithuania. Uh, um, and um, we called it Ilkapi or Castle Graves or, or, okay, it's not correct translation, but anyway, we have such very, very small hills in which uh, our, our, our ancestors several hundred years before buried, but they are, we still know the places where they are. And we, were, we are lighting candles uh, here, and this, uh, this is from ceremony we are making uh, to our ancestors, to our old ancestors. So now some photos from wedding rituals. So this wedding ritual in our Romova village, and uh, this is a wedding ritual of our young priests, uh, young Romova priests. Um, this is a part of ritual as in this song, which I have chanted. So they are drinking from, from mm. one vessel. So they are, um, so child blessing rituals. So uh, here is my, my, uh, blessing ceremony of my grand grandson, and so here yeah, also some some festival ceremony. This is a, a spring festival. Spring festival we call it. Your the festival of first spring, first green grass, and a lot of. Uh, Romova um, people are gathered in one place near near Molete, near Vilnius. So, so this ceremony from this festival. So this ceremony is from our <clears throat> winter solstice celebrations. We were celebrating it inside, and we are lighting some candles. Uh, this also um, this is some ritual from. Uh, the the same temple as I said in Romova village, and this is um, gates of uh, of summer solstice celebration. Here you can see uh, gates at night and some fire, and it's it. Oh, wonderful! What a what a yeah, the, uh, that was uh, or oh, exceeded my expectations. That was that was really wonderful. Okay. 
lo lots of beautiful photographs and uh, nicely chosen words. So th th thanks, thanks so, so much for that, uh, Kvivia Inya. Um, before I open, um, uh, I open it up to, uh, for questions. Uh, I, I've had one question someone sent me, so I, I will ask that uh, if I may before I for forget. Um, uh, it's it's from. Um, uh, Ralph Harrison of the, the uh, Odinist Fellowship, um, he asks, and I, I shall quote him, uh, what are um, Romuva's um, uh, uh, relationships with the Latvian um, Dev to um, Riba uh, movement, which has, uh, he says, made great strides and founded its first modern day temple at uh, Logstena on the Dorgava. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have uh, very good relationships. By the way, uh, yesterday we had um, our meeting. We call it Krivule. Um, uh, and uh, we have the meeting of um, uh, Lithuanians, um, Latvians, Devturi, Lithuanian Romova. Latvia, Devturi of, of Latvians and uh, some, uh, some communi community uh, in Belarus. Uh, they they um, uh, name themselves as uh, Baltic uh, people, not Slavic people. So um, some of them even speak Lithuanian. So, it was a very interesting meeting. We, usually, usually we meet once in a year, year and, uh, and it was planned to meet in Latvia and really it, we have planned to meet in this Lokstene Svetnica, in, in um, Lokstene's um, temple. Mm. But uh, you know, you know, uh, the reason why we couldn't meet, of course, it, it is uh, of, uh, because of Corona and, and um, this yes. Is a bad this photograph, but it gives some idea of what looks like an absolutely wonderful uh, yes, place. Yes, it's wonderful. Yes, yes. Yeah. We yeah. Have, have, have been there several times. So, um, and um, and uh, constantly we have a call, we have a very very um, uh, um, good conne connections, very good communication with them. And yesterday, the topic of our communication actually it was uh, honoring of ancestors, mm. and it was very interesting um, that there are a lot of things which we don't know about it each other's traditions and and you can't imagine um, of course uh, it it can seem um, oh maybe too too much said but but uh, this funeral and this commemoration of deaths traditions they are um, they have very very um, old feature, old features, and old, old um, things still survived till our days. And even in our day, when there is uh, Christian um, uh, this influence, uh, uh, Christian influence, and if even they are doing Christian ceremony, when they cut the grove yes the to put the the seeds well, yes to put so they uh, they are doing such in uh, in the wall before the okay it's problem me with these words when you uh, how you can call the thing in which you you can put the dead person you put that person often or urn. Yeah, yeah. urn or grave meaning the ground or ashes uh, grave uh, yes grave, grave. 
you put, you put yes, grave, but in this grave, grave, there is a, 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 a wooden a, box that the person is yes. coffin. Before, coffin. before putting coffin in this grave, in the wall of it, they are doing such place for candle. And they put candle in this um, place and then uh, put coffin and then put uh, the earth on it. So, so, and this is very, very ancient ritual because this flame, the flame uh, or fire, it symbolizes so this, this, um, this, the life energy. So just to clarify, um, is the, is the candle put on the, the coffin, so, uh, and then no, the earth... No, not in co coffin. Uh, but the, where is the candle, on the top, or is it somehow inside, so it can be kept lit near the body? No, not near the body. Okay, wait a moment, I'll... I'll uh, okay, so it's some problems with was if okay some I I like like some words uh, so when you make make a, a grave you you know this dig. It, yes you dig out uh, the earth and hmm? you dig out the earth Dig to make out the, the earth, and yeah. when it's it's um, uh, you have uh, uh, you have some four angles, and in one of uh, uh, wall of it, of wall, you yeah. make yes. Yes, yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think yes, a, a little kind of um, space. Niche. Space. space. Yes. 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 <laughs> a niche. Yes, so it's it's uh, it's very interesting because it's very very archaic ritual. It's nothing common with Christianity, and so um, so. Okay, I think I, I have an answered this question. Um, in in here, in here, can I ask you a simple question? I, I'm very curious. Um, when you meet with the Latvians, what language do you speak? Ah, okay, it was complicated because. We were speaking Lithuanian, and there were two women, one who translated to Latvian, another from Latvian to Lithuanian. And the Belarusians, they speak Belarusian. And also it was, actually it was very complicated. It was uh, very complicated, but anyway, we managed it. It was for seven hours. <laughs> Okay. Very tiring. Seven, seven <laughs> hours. So anyway, but what to do? Um, my, um, I, I, I just finish off the, the, the question of uh, um, Ralph. He, he also says, is the is the um, uh, European Congress of Ethnic Religions still still going? I think he's tried to contact it, but not not uh, had any any success. Who who wants to contact? Oh, um, this is Ralph Harrison of the Odinist Fellowship. Um, okay, I... mm, look, um, uh, uh, World Congress of Ethnic Religions uh, is alive, but um, but you know the lead leader who who now is he is uh, lives in United States. And he has a lot of, of duties. He has a lot of duties. And so, so maybe therefore there are some misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Now, um, my, Michael, I think you had a question. Please go ahead. I have three simple questions. First of all, I didn't know that you've become a grandmother. So congratulations on that. Who, who is the mother of your grandson? So um, I have four, four oh, grandsons, four. four, four, but still it's, it's, it's uh, only few because I have four daughters. 
Yes. I have yes. four daughters and only two of them uh, have, uh, have become mothers. Become which, mothers. Which, so, which two? Which two are they? Um, which so one is Rimgaile. Okay. She lives in in um, in Kaunas with yes. her husband, and they have boy and girl. And another one is Indre. Indre. Oh. And Indre uh, lives in New York now, in um, <laughs> in in New Jersey, oh. in New Jersey. <laughs> and she also has boy and girl. And she is married. Um, I, I, how you say I, Englishman? Hmm. Is he English or Irish? I thought he was English. Irish. English. English. So, okay. Uh, younger, my youngest daughter has Irish friend. Uh, okay. I um, guess so. You know. Well, they say they say that grandchildren are the rewards one gets for not having murdered your own children. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so All right. I have just two simple little questions. Uh, when you showed the uh, the hymns, the uh, to the different deities, are there is there one for to uh, Diev? Uh, is there a, a a series of songs to the uh, to the sky god? Do you have, and then that's one question. And then the other question is when you showed the um, the fire temple in the uh, Ramuva village, there is a wooden figure behind the fire. Uh, which which deity is that? If if you can remember, it yes, was one of, the remember, early... of course, of course. So it's no, not the full picture of the statue. And this statue, yeah. statue de depicts the uh, wild, wild um, construction, the construction of uh, uh, how we perceive the... Creation of the world. Yes, so the world. structure of the world. So the um, uh, uh, it's it's made according uh, our um, our folk song, and um, uh, it's in the uh, um, um, uh, on the ground the uh, music instrument kankle, called kankles. This specific music instrument is. Uh, uh, mainly used for uh, honoring uh, ancestors. And uh, in the middle, there is a, a big, big B, B, which yes. symbolizes the world of, uh, of, pe of people, of, 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 of um, human, yes? And uh, on the top is, uh, they are two falcons, they symbolize the 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 cosmos okay. that is i have one question but uh, i didn't ask uh, yet the, can you repeat the, uh, michael the, the question uh, uh, do you have hymns to dev no 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 not yet but not yet. but you will <laughs> we'll see yeah <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Mikal, Mikal. Yeah, Please. sure. Mm -hmm. So I remember you showed the picture of a uh, god that was riding a goat with a spear. Do you know what that di deity is? It was this picture, red picture, with a man riding a goat. Man riding a goat. Okay, it's thunder goat, thunder god, Perkunas. Oh, that's Perkunos. Okay. Yeah. Um, and like like Thor, he the 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 goat is a, a sacred animal to him. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I think I interrupted someone else who was speaking. I don't know if it's possible to come in here, uh, Steve. Yeah, of course. Yes, Alan, please go ahead. Very uh, interested. The reference to a goat, as uh, most people. Well, I won't say most, but a lot of you will know, I was brought up in a uh, staunchly uh, Protestant family. And I had contacts, uh, I won't even say more than context, 
with the orange order as a result. And the goat has certain significance within the orange order, which I've never quite uh, been able to fathom out. Um, as, as certainly you know, uh, Stead, I visited Newfoundland uh, last year, almost exactly a year ago, and it was very uh, uh, interesting to note that there was a, what they say was the, the largest, uh, uh, not temple, but an orange hall for want of a better term, in the whole of North America there. And it had two goats um, over the doorway into there. Um, it might be uh, <laughs> uh, very strange to think, but I wonder if there is some uh, connection between uh, the Orange Order and a more focused, for want of a better term, religion, a more ancient, a more indigenous religions, which uh, Inia has so, uh, so well uh, described to us in the Lithuanian context. Um, it, this might be a complete red herring, it probably is a red herring, but I thought I'd just throw that in because it's uh, quite a strange connection. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It could be, but you know. Uh, I don't think we'll ever know the answer. <laughs> no, no. It, uh, well, um, I, I'm sure that's to be found somewhere in some book about the Orange Order. Um, uh, oh, is it a question from Ben? I think he's not asked one. In it's in in chat. Let's. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Ben would like to know um, about uh, Soviet. Uh, repression um, or upon uh, Romova, which I understand was, yeah, was was quite considerable, and people were were imprisoned, and uh, I understand some people were, were were even executed, which, yeah, it is is some a kind of experience that people in our country have no, uh, you know, have not had at all. Um, you know, um, I need to say that um, in Soviet times, we can't name ourselves as a religious community. Mm -hmm. Even singing folk songs, it wasn't, uh, uh, and celebrating some festivals, it wasn't a good idea, and it wasn't accepted by, by Soviets. So um, we can't officially, uh, name ourselves as um, uh, as uh, um, as religion as religion community in no ways so but even even um, uh, for uh, for that that uh, 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 some student they celebrated uh, some some uh, um, festivals and so on and um, uh, some of them, and uh, my late husband, um, they were expelled from university. So um, uh, for he, for him, uh, it was it was in 1971, and uh, 20 years, actually a little bit less than 20 years, he had no possibility to work. Uh, intellectual work. The only work he he did he was he was cutting stones and making monuments from stones. Some, mm -hmm. some. So, so it was um, uh, such situation. So I can't. Uh, no of them we are put to prison and so on, because uh, it was um, uh, these. Um, times 60s and 70s actually it was um, um, some some era of, of Khrushchev and Brezhnev and, and these persecutions near, uh, we are not such strong as it were um, you know earlier during uh, Stalin times mm. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Um, I'd, if I may, I'd, I'll ask a question from um, uh, Richard, uh, who uh, asks, uh, what, what is the opinion of um, Romova of 
Maria uh, Gimbuta and her, her theories about the, I, I presume, which means the, you know, the, the quite strongly ma matriarchal kind of yeah. uh, identity of early Europe. Um, yes. Uh, so, um, so we have um, some some uh, um, memories of our connections with uh, Maria Gimbutas. And even we have some postcard where he, uh, she writes that uh, she, um, she is very happy to know Romova, and uh, and so on. So and of course her works and uh, inspired as as very much. Mm. And also she was exp uh, inspired of Lithuanian folklore. Mm. She actually she said that uh, that she, uh, Lithuanian this um, um, Lithuanian folklore had helped her to understand what what she have found in her discoveries. Mm. I mean this uh, uh, um, uh, these great goddesses, yes. So so um, and when we look. Uh, nowadays, from nowadays perspective, uh, uh, into folklore and into our heritage. So now I can say that uh, that if if we um, look at uh, uh, at gods and goddesses uh, whom we pray to, so uh, most of them are female go goddesses. Do, and what sort of characters do do they have um, in in um, uh, Britain? Most of the groups who have a, a, a focus upon worshiping the the goddess in various forms seem to um, visualize her as a as a quite a pacific, uh, peace loving, and um, calm. Uh, presence, some uh, often connected with the kind of music which people use to relax. And uh, today is the second day of Navaratri, the the Indian um, festival of the goddess that I'm sure you're very familiar with, uh, which is dominated by um, uh, the goddess Durga, who is the exact uh, opposite of that. Uh, a most uh, a, a, a violent uh, uh, a deity who um, defeats evil in 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 the person of the these uh, uh, demons in the form of a buffalo, and and she wields about ten different weapons simultaneously. You know the very embodiment of kind of a the warlike spirit. It's a real marked contrast, I think. But so yeah, oh. do, do, does that have any parallels? <laughs> okay, so. So look, um, if compare with India, so India has this uh, real um, in, uninterrupted tradition, and um, and all aspects of of goddesses, both both uh, evil and both positive, they um, they are accepted, you know. But um, as far as um, now. Anyway, uh, all, all my all my presentation, I want <laughs> I wanted to say that we have this uninterrupted tradition. But anyway, not so uninterrupted as in India. So, mm -hmm. so and we need to look. We are looking from um, um, uh, per, uh, we are looking to gods and goddesses from uh, our modern perspective. And we see, uh, we uh, would uh, rather like to, to see positive aspects of, of them than, than, neg than contrary. But, but there are uh, a lot of things that we can, can choose. We can choose and, 
Mm. But anyway, we we look for positive some things. Uh, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I understand what you say. Although I, see, I mean, Durka is perceived as as someone that is killing evil. So yeah, yeah, that yeah. that is a positive. She's a strong force, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. in the individual, it, it, it's like killing one's own sins and uh, yes. issues. But anyway, now I think uh, uh, I'll try and. Um, Ed, can I just say on your on I yeah. think Samina is would probably be more comparable to Parvati or Uma among the uh, the Hindu goddesses. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, he's talking to Smiles. Um, I, I, I so probably, if possible. Um, Oh, I, I, I just I'll ask this question from um, uh, Svar because it's put it in in chat. Um, uh, in, 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 is there any hostility uh, towards um, Slavs? Uh, Svar uh, uh, asks, um, possibly stemming from the the uh, Soviet era or, or for other other reasons. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Uh, mistrust among Baltic pagans towards Slavs because of the negative treatment that they received under Soviet rule? So, uh, can you repeat a little bit? What? Um, is, is there any mistrust of um, Slavs, the Slavic uh, people on the part of the uh, Baltic pagans? Maybe because the Slavs were perceived as the people that were, um, you know, pressing. yeah, 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 the, the Soviets. Okay, so, um, okay, so you, you rem reminded me, me uh, one very important thing that I need to, to say for you, because uh, about our status, about, uh, situation of our organization, of our Romova community. You know, um, uh, as I said, we uh, are registered in 1992. And we have a, a law of religious, uh, of religious law, which says that, um, which divides religions into three groups, into three categories. Mm -hmm. Uh, according um, um, according uh, uh, are they uh, acknowledged by state or no? Are they and are they traditional? Mm -hmm. They are two two criteria. So, and um, the highest level. Um, uh, they are uh, in this level, they are religious communities which are called traditional and which are acknowledged by state. Mm. So these are mainly Christian, but there are some, some uh, Muslims and some, some, uh, some also some Jews in this cat category. Uh, the second lower level is is called uh, acknowledged by state, not traditional. So, and in, in this level, there are some uh, Christian communities. And there is a lowest level, which is named not acknowledged uh, communities that are not acknowledged by state and not traditional. So there are a lot of communities and our Romova is on this, the, this level. The, the, the lowest level? Lowest level. Oh, really? It's a, it's but according to law, <laughs> according to the law, when uh, you uh, have 25 as of your registration official, you can apply to get, you know, better position. So, and in 2017, we, we did it. We uh, made an application 
to the Lithuanian parliament and we get, get uh, very good recommendations from everywhere, from different international organizations and from uh, um, uh, other, some official institutions and so on. And, um, uh, and there we have some debates in parliament and um, it it uh, 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 they voted against it against it so so we lack uh, uh, the the there the are one uh, uh, 141 person in our parliament parliamentarians and we lack only six votes only six votes we are not much but you know so, and it was because the church was very active. The Christian church, Archbishop sent the letters to all members of parliament before, day before voting. And he said that there is not a religious community, that, that this folklore and uh, some bullshit anyway, he, he had written. But any, anyway, it... Um, uh, made influence, and we we didn't get official recognition, <clears throat> you know. So, so, um, uh, uh, but uh, and one. Of, uh, why I am telling this story? Because one of uh, the parliament 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 members who was in uh, Christian uh, this party. Conservatives Christians Party, he said that Romova, that we are Soviet agents. <laughs> that we are Soviet agents. And um, so he told much more about it. So, and um, uh, you know, uh, and what we are trying uh, nowadays and before, we, we try a little bit to escape these connections, uh, direct connections, even with Russian pagan groups. Because, you know, in nowadays, it's very complicated. It's very sensitive, yeah. I, 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 I don't, uh, I want to proceed a little bit. So then what we did, we, did we made an application to European Court for Human Rights, and we uh, we sent it a, a year before the our application, and we are waiting for an answer. Okay. Um, now I, no. I think the. the Mike, my, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I did uh, have two, yes. two questions. One is perhaps I'll leave by side because it's kind of theological and complicated. And but, it, uh, is, excuse me, can you um, speak a little bit um, more slowly? Not so fast. Yes. Not so um, fast. What, in your opinion, is the reason for the obvious success of paganism, particularly among young people? in Lithuania, I was impressed at the pictures by seeing that it was all generations and seemed to be not in any way wishing to speak badly about pagan movements in other parts of the world, but it, it, people seem to be very healthy and normal. <laughs> and uh, it struck me as a sort of success story, if I can put it simply like that. And to what do you attribute the strength and success of paganism in Lithuania. I have one obvious answer that you said it was the last part of Europe to be Christianized, but are there other factors at play? I think that we did uh, a big, uh, uh, it was a big work. Hmm. Because I, I was very struck by the number of uh, young people who were, I mean, I didn't see any mobile phones or anything they were obviously very serious and it, it, it struck Done struck me yes, they are. what else what else can i say that that uh, weddings and uh, child blessing ceremonies uh, become more and more popular 
And mm. it's very interesting for me when people, uh, young people who want to marry, they came to me, usually they are not from our community. Mm. Usually they have mm -hmm. searched somewhere in internet and they are coming to me asking for ceremony. Mm. So, and the, I, I, I am asking them why they decided. So they as said, uh, they say, uh, are saying that uh, they don't um, uh, really belong to Christian church. They are don't uh, going and so on. A and they um, uh, feel their close connection to nature. Hmm. And could I, also I try, could I, yeah. I, I want to add something and, and see if in your book would agree with this, but I remember First of all, I mean, the whole thing that Lithuania was the last European country to be converted to Christianity. So there's a more of a continuity. And that's why when uh, uh, Jonas was first organizing, he got the young people to go out to the country to record the, um, the traditions that were still known by the people living in the country. And I just remember uh, very, very early, I, I think it was even before um, the independence, uh, there was a fire ceremony in the park behind the, the main cathedral. And what was so interesting to me was that other people would be passing by in the park, but they wouldn't react to the fact that this ceremony was going on. If we did that in Britain, you'd always have a whole group of people gawking at you and, and stopping. But Lithuanians don't didn't do that because it was something that seems to be still so much uh, part of Lithuanian culture. It's it's natural to them. So they don't seem to. Um, it's just a more integrated natural expression. Uh, Yes, you know, I have what feeling I have. Um, you know, I um, usually, you, you are true. Um, when I am performing, um, uh, for instance, wedding ceremonies, wedding or child blessing, um, as I said, usually they are people who are not very much involved in our movement. Mm -hmm. They just you know, uh, want to, to do such kind of ceremony. And, um, and people who, uh, they invite their relatives, their friends, you know, and uh, there is a circle of people who take part in, in it. And most of them, they see this ceremony first time, most of them. And for me, it's very, very impressive when old women, they come and, and they uh, thank me, they say thank you, and they say that it's for them, it's very, you know, um, they feel that's, that's Lithuanian, that's native spirit they feel in, in it. For me, it's very big compliment when people see it first time and they except uh, without any, you know. Yeah. Do, do, do you think, if I may add, um, do you think a part of, of this power that the, the, the um, ceremony seem to have is because you, you have taken time to um, dress in a way that looks consistent with the, with the history of the country, consistent with nature, and dignified, and it it it, it has a quite a, a power. I think the the way the, the costumes, the the hats and pieces of jewelry, um, and maybe that that's part of it. Do you think that is true? Uh, so, but it's only the one one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, our strengths is in our in our in our music our songs because when we are doing rituals so this singing is the most mm. the most powerful thing yeah. and um, in in um, 
it um, it makes very big impression because you know you repeat words and you sing the tune which which our ancestors we are singing thousands of years before. Mm -hmm. It's a, such kind, such very, very interesting um, impression. Mm. Do, do, and do very you, strong, and very strong. Do you have actual hymns which are, are very old, um, not merely folk songs, but are actual hymns that have been recorded because I, I wasn't aware that um, European paganism did really have these ancient hymns that, that uh, were still, you know, were recorded. Of course, hymns, we are not recorded, but we made a, a big job to re reconstruct it. So when you, when you, um, uh, we have our CDs and listen CDs, mm. and in every CD we have a book with uh, with translation into English, all the words and so on. So um, they are alive, and yes. we they even can you imagine when the whole st stadi stadium. Stadium or stadium is yeah. singing uh, uh, these hymns, so mm. it's um, it's such kind of a word to us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah. Mikhail, did did sorry, did you want to come in? Uh, yeah, I had a few remarks. Like first, uh, regarding the Slavic um, relationship. I mean, this is my opinion, so I want to know what you think about it, but I think there's a significant difference regarding Western and Eastern Slavs, um, because of, of course in Poland, there is a big uh, negative sentiment towards Russia. And of course, Poland, Poland is a big country with many people. And there was um, uh, historically probably in the, uh, you know that there was um, a huge Polish-Lithuanian empire, right? Yeah. So I feel like that the Western Slavic-Lithuanian uh, relationship is much more positive versus the Eastern Slavic-Lithuanian relationship, which is more negative. So I think there's a very important difference because, because the Western Slavs were influenced by the Catholic Church, whereas the Eastern Slav were influenced by the by the Orthodox Church, and there's a very like uh, as I was studying these matters and I was studying more about um, the Russian culture and and all about that, I realized that there's a very big difference, and especially in this area where I'm from, um, I I feel there's a like there was a very strong mixing of the of the Western Slavs with the with the Germanic. Uh, culture. And, so, and the, yeah, where, from, where are you from? Where I'm from Bratislava. Bratislava. And I, I hypothesize, especially with the with the Polabian Slavs that that lived in in the eastern part of Germany, with their you know you probably know of the great shrine in Arcona in the, in the in the what's it called in the island of Rügen in Germany. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is an important distinction to make with yes. Eastern and Eastern Slavs. Yes, they, they are. But you know, now, now I um, really, um, I can't say that, uh, that uh, Eastern Slavs are, are bad and don't worse to communicate with them. So it's oh, anyway, it, it depends on, on persons and so on. But uh, what I want to say that we have very good connections with uh, the Polish native believers. They, um, they are uh, one group of young people. They, um, they are visiting our camps and our events. So, so we have very good connections. Uh, instead, could I just come in on that? Yes, of course. Uh, First of all, I mean, first of all, let me just say, Inya, that was a wonderful presentation. And I think you really conveyed very much, especially with the photos, the beauty 
that Romava has has created and has uh, developed. But uh, one of the things that I think is unique about Romava for being a an ethnic spirituality, and I think this goes back to uh, Inya's husband, Jonas Dracunas, his concept always was, uh, it wasn't closing borders off to other people. Uh, so when you talk about the, the other, like the uh, Latvians and the Slavs yeah. and so forth, uh, Jonas always had this vision of universalism yeah. and that uh, he was open to all pagans, he's actually open to everybody. And so I think that vision of Jonas's is, is has really uh, characterized Roma for, for what for what it has is and and continues to be that it's a very open, more flexible, um, not chauvinistic. I mean, there's always exceptions. You will always find some uh, yeah. Lithuanians that have this old-fashioned uh, chauvinist idea, but overall, <laughs> as a movement, it's it's a very progressive, open. A universalistic yeah. form of paganism. Yes, it's true. It's true. Um, one thing I'd like to ask: um, I, I was struck in by your your talk uh, how important the flame was. I, I hadn't realised that before today. What what I'd read and things. So that that really came across very strongly and about keeping the flame alive. Uh, I, I, uh, do you? I mean, uh, are you? Um, aware of uh, Zoroastrianism, uh, uh, which comes to mind as a, a religion that obviously venerates the flame and, and also has a sense of also the dark and the, the, the opposition between light and dark as being a sort of the central metaphor. I wondered what, what your view of uh, um, Zoroastrianism is. Uh, for me, it's um, now it's difficult to to compare. So maybe you, we we need to ask uh, uh, Mi Michael. <laughs> oh, do <don't> you... <laughs> you want me to say something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> all right. I mean, all right. They both both uh, the Balts and of course the Persians are Indo-European uh, descending cultures. And the fire goes back to really, I mean, I mean, Lithuania, I think the Romava has continued very, very strongly in a, in its original understanding. Uh, when Zarathustra overturned the whole kind of understanding and made the gods into demons and the demons into gods, uh, there were certain things that he couldn't erase. One was the, uh, the Homa Soma cult, and the other one was the fire cult. The fire was so uh, strong that they've continued it. But I don't think most, other than the Zoroastrian Parsi uh, thing, the, the rest of the Indo-European daughter cultures don't have this absolute white versus black or this good versus evil uh, dichotomy as strong as is our thrust to create? I think that was that was Thurster's particular take on it. Um, yeah, I yeah. I think he introduced. Yeah. Um, well, as far as I know, like the distinction in the Western Slavic uh, Belobok and Chernobok came from the Polabian Slavs, if I'm not mistaken. And I, if I'm if I'm correct, that that was caused by their uh, very late Christianization that they created, or they sort of started worshiping the anxieties, I'm not really sure. Mm. But I found this connection, at least when, when Inia was talking about it. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, if, when I have a word, I, I would like to um, remark on one thing which I find uh, interesting or a good way to think about some of these things. I, uh, when you talked about uh, the nature and the, in the nature worship, in some sense, nature worship. I had the privilege to grow up in Japan. I lived there for two years during my childhood. And I had um, a lot of experiences uh, visiting the Shintoistic um, uh, temples. Yeah. 
And I really like the notion that they use or idea of, of kami, which means in some sense you can translate as God or spirit or demon, but uh, in some sense, I would say it's untranslatable. And, and these entities, let's call them, they are neither good nor evil. And that's why I think is the, I would believe it's the best way to think about the gods. That they are in a sense beyond good and evil uh, in the maybe a Nietzschean sense. And, and you know, uh, when you talked about the dark and light side, you know, you know that the light always has to cast a shadow. So that's just the way it is, you know, and nature is, does not have good and evil. It just is. It's just a manifestation of some kind of uh, force or entity or power. Well, it's, it's a whole uh, uh, new can of worms, I think, there, but uh, a very nice one. Uh, well, well, that's the can of worms that would have been my first question, actually. That's, what, that's practically exactly what... But, but I really find this notion of Kami very good uh, yes. to sort of reconstruct yes. this uh, traditionalist view because you don't have the Christian influence. Yes. And it is also shown in very, like in various, uh, like I used to watch some uh, Japanese anime films where this is shown very strongly, like mm. the spirit of the forest, you know, there's this like story where the spirit of the forest, maybe you know this film, it's called Princess Mononoke. And it's about the story where the spirit of the forest is like this very old deer that turns into like a spirit when he's, uh, when the night, uh, during, uh, when the day changes to night. It's a very interesting story, and I think it could uh, bring to a lot of people new connections with all of these things. In, in you, do you, do you, um, do, do, do you do broadly agree with, with uh, this comparison with Kami uh, of the gods, as sort of beyond good and evil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you, you know. Um, I'd like to to go to Japan. And we started communicating with ambassador of Japan in, in Lithuania. Actually, we have very good connections and um, uh, we invited them to our ceremonies and they, they liked it very much. And even we celebrated New Year with them. We, because um, Jonas, uh, uh, daughter from first marriage uh, her name is Gemina as, uh, as mm. goddess of, of um, earth she is a very good um, conkless player some Lithuanian instrument I, and she she is teaching wife of ambassador oh, and they are playing together and she and we made the new year party here all my family, it was last year, you know, this year nobody can come. But last year it was um, amb uh, this ambassador from, uh, from um, with his family from um, Japan and so all my family. And my, my strategy was to persuade them to invite our singing group to Japan. Yes. But, and it, started some some things but now now it's you know on hold i i, I don't think that <laughs> maybe after a year or some but but i i'd like to visit japan and uh, actually they invited they uh, did one step they invited one young uh, our romuva priest priest priestess to to come to to Japan and to visit temples and so on so she she went there so they they arranged here uh, everything so my dream is to to go to Japan that sounds uh, very good I'm sure it will happen eventually I I can I give the chance to people that not uh spoken to contribute um oh i think andrew ray is has, has gone unfortunately uh dirk have you have you would you like to say anything um no i just have one one general question what what sort of percentage of the population would identify with romuva 
good question, but I, I have uh, actually no answer. Because, you know, we have not, uh, we haven't re registration. So, so who knows? We have, we have, uh, now I, I don't remember, but uh, almost 30 communities uh, in, uh, in capital city and in other cities. They uh, unite some, some people, but um, uh, some of them are active, some of them are more formal, but, uh, uh, but also they are people who are not connected, who are not in our communities. You know, it's the yeah. same as, as Christians who don't come to church, but anyway, they say that they are Christians. So, so do, you, do you have any kind of um, census form that you have to fill in every day, 10 years? In, in Britain, we get a form that asks us various yes, things. Yes, so, so it was 10 years before, and then it was, uh, so five, five and a half thousand. So it's, it's not many, but it was only 10 years before. So, so 20 years before this census, it was 1,100, 20 years before. And next census, it was uh, 10, after 10 years, it was 5,000 and something. And, uh, but now it should be again, but now they decided not to put this question into the, uh, you know, into the list. Yeah. So, so yes. So then we, I don't think that we can compare now. Well, that means you can make your own claims. Can I? Um, uh, uh, is it possible to? Uh, uh, I've been trying to get in for some time now, and yes, the okay. conversation might have moved on. Uh, but uh, just the points of enlightenment, uh, Inya um, might be able to uh, uh, clarify for me. I was always under the impression that both. Uh, Lithuanians and Latvians were Slavic, whereas the Estonians, whereas the Estonians were West Finnic or Baltic. Uh, perhaps you can in, in, uh, clarify that for me. Secondly, uh, the point that was made earlier about Lithuania being the last European country to uh, uh, convert to Christianity. Um, I don't know whether you know Stead or whether you, you else knew uh, a great uh, Swedish colleague of mine, Lars Janström, uh, sadly died a couple of years ago. No, no great age, a real tragedy. Uh, great man, Lars. But uh, when I stayed with Lars in Stockholm in, I think it was 97, I could be wrong, um, uh, he was quite emphatic that Sweden was the last country in Europe. Uh, to, uh, to, okay, uh, okay. Uh, to Christianity. Again, I might be wrong, but just <laughs> if I can have some clarification. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the good taste to say that you um, uh, are the last. So uh, what I want to say, I am sorry, but, but um, um, I am not sure if I understand, understood you correct, but but uh, Lithuanians and Latvians, they are Baltic, uh, on the Baltic, Baltic not Slavs, not Slavs. The they, we are, family is, 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 is regarded as a, a, the Baltic language family. It's, it's Baltic, Baltic language yeah. family. They are also Prussians, uh, in former times Prussians, and uh, Latvians and Lithuanians and Mm. Now, is the Latvian and uh, Lithuanian languages very close? Yes, it's close. It's close. But anyway, we need, totally to, we, we need to, 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 to learn. It's, it's mm. anyway, it, it, intelligible, it, not mutually intelligible, um, except in a few words, I think. But, um, um, uh, I, one question, I, I think we're, we're, you know, you've uh, been very uh, good answering. I think we're, we're sort of moving towards the end. Uh, um, 
normally like to uh, have these last about two hours. Does Kane ask a question? No. Uh, yeah, I, I know that um, you, you, you've been to India several times, and uh, I think uh, Jonas, um, when he was a student, he was a member of Friends of India, and that, you know, uh, caused his interest in uh, uh, such connections. Um, in comparison with Hinduism, which obviously is is a vast tradition, one thing that they, they have, or, or two things, which the European pagan uh, movements now don't have, is um, works of great um, philosophical power and profile, such as the Bhagavad Gita and the Anishads, and they, they also have a long um, uh, religious um, epic, such as the Ramayan. Um, I don't know what that noise is. Uh, is that um, these two holes? Um, uh, 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 do you have any thoughts about what will come into these holes, or or? Or, 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 yeah. Can you repeat? Sorry, sorry oh, for my um, <laughs> not perfect understanding of English. No, it's not. So, what um, about? It, we we have two um, t two things we don't have as European pagans. Oh, okay, okay. We, we we don't have any philosophic works yeah. like the Upanishads, yeah. like, like the Gita. And we don't have a religious epic. We have yeah. the Iliad and the Odyssey, which are wonderful works, but they're not about figures who one can worship as deities in the same way as yeah, yeah. Ram in the Ramayana. These two uh, gaps, um, can we live with these gaps or will they be filled in time? Or should we take things from, from the Hindu tradition? What's your view? Okay. Look, for most of people, for most of people, uh, these uh, philosophical things, they are not very important. But they are uh, people for, for whom it is it's, um, very important. And we in Romova, we have, we have young people, we have uh, at least one uh, doctor, young doctor of philosophy, who is in in this in Romova way, in Romova philosophy, mm -hmm. and uh, I I see um, I see some some uh, 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 some light ahead mm -hmm. that that if we have some some uh, capable strong uh, people so. So we we will uh, this philosophical aspects they will will uh, happen so mm -hmm. and uh, it will be it will be good. See, things will grow. Things will grow. Yes, they, they will grow. Uh, they go. Our our tradition is basically through our mythology, and we don't have the uh, Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharata, but. If you want a, a really wonderful, almost like a, a sacred book in itself, uh, I would say Robert uh, Roberto Colasso's, Colasso's um, The Marriage of uh, Cadmus and Harmony. He has put together, it's his own interpretation, but he's put together a, a, an incredible interpretation of mythology from Homer and Hesiod all the way through to Nonus. And it really it works as a as a kind of an equivalent that we might have in the West to something they have in India. I, I would just recommend okay. that. Can you can you uh, post me in Facebook yes, I, if, I, I, the I, name I, and the it, title? Yes, Thank yes. You. It's controversial, and there's some things you won't agree with, but overall, it's it's a fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. What, what is the name again? Roberto uh, Colasso, and it's the marriage of Cadmus and Harmony. But I'll send it to you, Inya. Wonderful. Okay, thanks. Good. Um, 
Any any mm. other? Um, oh yeah, M M Mikhail. Am I pronouncing your your name correctly? I'm probably um, not. Well, to be exact, it's Mikhail with a C H sound. Mikhail. But it's okay. Um, so um, I had a I have a small remark uh, because I liked uh, when Inia Inia was talking about the songs, and I think it's uh, it's influenced or well, this idea is influenced by the work of a very interesting uh, Czech um, Indologist. He is working right now in Prague. Um, as far as I know, he doesn't know English, so he's not that very well known. His name is Jan Kozak. He translated, uh, for example, Manu's Law to Czech. Um, and he has a very deep analysis of, he's a, I would consider him a religionist. So he studied religions in general. And he has this very interesting idea with regarding the comparison of Aramaic and Indo-European languages. And the main difference is that um, Indo-European languages are, are vowel-based languages. Whereas, whereas Aramaic languages are consonant-based languages, because in, in Aramaic languages, you don't write the, the vowels, right, in the text. And uh, the important thing is that the vowels carry the tone, whereas the consonants don't carry the tone. So I think this is a very important distinction to know and remember, that the vowels are more important in languages and they carry the tone. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, in in um, we uh, uh, I I will be formally um, ending the meeting soon. Would Would you like uh, after I've done that? Would you like to say a a kind of a closing prayer or or a verse from a song? Are you asking me? Yes. Would you like to to do that when I've just said something? It's, it's uh, some um, hymn, some song for Mother Earth. Earth. Oh, okay. I'll, yeah, I, I, after, I've, after I've said something and blown the candle okay. out, you can do that. That's good. All right. Now, yeah, before I do that, I mean, does anyone who has a, has a question uh, at, at all that um, otherwise, I mean, we, we've come to two hours. Uh, Inya has been... Uh, very uh, very generous with her time and uh, uh, an energy and if if no one has any any questions I, I think I think it would perhaps be good to um, close it right okay then at Kveldis Galdagloefer Konu Eprendea Makie Ruindea Noye Gevinea Easter Eve Kemur Ull a trukitair or ag not skal quold lufer. Blessed gods of our peoples and lands, at evening shall one praise the day and at night shall one praise the evening. We offer thanks for what we profited by and for what we have found pleasure in. Sigur either, sigur either, sigur os, sigur os. Preither either, preither either, preither os, preither os. A victory to you, a victory to us. Peace be to you, peace be to us. Convanto Vishwam Aryam, let us make the world noble. Hail Ozin. Inya, please. Um. Jena le geroi, jemina de joi, jemine la, jet kelela, te tomo saugini, te tomo snechoi, jemine la, jet kelela, jedalis margaisis, sirbaisis, salajaisis, jemine la, jet kelela. Palabinki mumir, sveikinki mumi, jeminela, jetkelela. Kriya that was that was a beautiful and a fitting end to to the 
moot and we should all leave it uh, in a better uh, frame okay. of soul thank and mind. You. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank it you, was, it thank was you. pleasure, thank pleasure to, to share you. with hmm. you. And and I'd like to add my special thanks. Because thanks, I've everyone, for the question. And as well. Thank you, Ian. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's wonderful. Oh, I, I I'll I wish everyone uh, a, a good afternoon. Thanks again, Krivia, Inya, and uh, yeah, I hope we will meet again in in uh, in person sometime. Uh, yes, please come visit Lithuania. Definitely. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.